outside. Good morning and welcome to today's webinar, Sketch Block Design, with uh, me, David Durston. What we're going to be doing is having a look at layouts, sketch blocks, and what they do and what they're used for. Now, layouts are SolidWorks' version of a fag packet 2D uh, design where you want to throw down some geometry and uh, start creating uh, sort of your concepts for your model without having to go through the process of creating a full 3D model. Um, we create a layout in an assembly and then it puts us into sort of like an assembly sketch. Um, within your assembly you can then start uh, sketching various different shapes. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a very simple uh, little assembly here. If I can get my arm to go the right way around. And we're going to then turn this assembly into, um, or these sketches into an assembly that has some form of movement in it. Just bear with me while I create the geometry. So what I'm doing is I'm creating my sketch items. Now what we're going to be looking at is creating a hinge relation between this section of the sketch and that section of the sketch. In order to do it we're going to have to create um, some blocks um, which is sort of the second part of what we're going to be looking at today. Oh, that looks very nice doesn't it? And then we're going to use these blocks in order to uh, create the movement uh, within the assembly. So we've created some simple geometry. What we want to do is create sketch blocks with these now. To do that, select the section of lines you're interested in and click on the Make Block tool. This gives us the, nine, the entities which are going to be including the block and an insertion point, uh, which we can specify anywhere on, on the block. Once the block's been created, we've got the option of saving it away. We can see it here. We've got the option of saving it away onto the hard disk um, in order to use again later. So if you regularly use the same shape geometry, you can save the block and use it to import again. And I'll show you some of that a little bit later. So that's the first block created. And then we're going to follow the same process for the second block. And the only thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to move my insertion point and drop it on the center of that uh, circular feature. So very quickly, I've created two blocks. These blocks um, are mobile. They're not related to anything else um, within the layout sketch. Um, but once I've created them, I can then start to add relations to them. Now, the relations apply to the whole block, not just to the entity I clicked on when I was creating it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this uh, back onto the origin. And this block's now fixed in place. Now, what's quite nice about sketch blocks is you can add relations between different sketch blocks, and you get independent sections of um, sketch geometry which have movement between them. So there we go, we can now see I've very quickly created a hinge. So although I've only thrown down some very simple uh, geometry, I've already started to get movement and, and mate equivalent functionality into my model. And if I come out of my, um, my layout, my movement is still, still there and I can still use it. So in terms of a conceptual design, you can get stuff on the screen very quickly. From there, usually you want to move into 3D geometry. What we can do is we can select our block. We can make a part from our block. We can then come in, we can edit our part, and we can start making it into a 3D entity. If I select the sketch, which is what the block has become, and then we're going to choose to extrude it. Oh, wrong box. 
and we're going to make this a fairly sizable item. I'm going to repeat that process with my second block, having finished editing that component. Repeat that, this is going to be the same width, again, mid-plane. And then from there, I can now try to start to do additional features onto these two entities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to add a new sketch onto this plane. And we're going to make this quite simple. Ideally, I was looking to click on the next line there, if I'm honest. There we go. And this just being going to be a standard cut extrude feature, I'm just going to add the uh, additional relations in order to make sure everything is consistent. And then the final dimension. There. Should be about right. And then I'm going to use that new sketch to create an extruded cut. Check my direction. There we go. And very quickly, I've got from some basic geometry, yes, I know I've still got overlapping features here, but as a, as a demonstration, should show what's going on. We've turned two very simple sketches into something which is, or will in the future, resemble a, a computer laptop. So we've got our entity there. We can still see our layout behind. If that's something you don't want to be seeing anymore, we can choose to get rid of it. So very quickly we can turn simple 2D sketch geometry fag packet design into a 3D model as well. Now what I'm going to do now is show you bringing in some parts from a um, existing sketch and what we're going to do is we're going to use that to create um, some additional geometry having pulled things out of a design library. So in my design library here what I've done is I've created some uh, webinar blocks and we're going to pull them out of the design library and we're going to put them onto our layout and then use that to create some motion and relations between them. First of all, I need to um, come into my layout and then essentially it's just dragging in the various components. So what I'll do is I'll drag in the rotor here. I'm going to drop that down out the way over there. I can drag in the shaft. And then finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in the guide. So this is existing geometry that I've already uh, created. So I've inserted all of these blocks. We can then start relating these together. And the final one is going to be a collinear between these two center lines. And what we've got very quickly is we've got to a model which is showing quite a, a reasonable range of motion. So very quickly, having used save blocks, I'm creating a much greater model. Now, I could at this point go on and make that 3D, but what I want to show you is actually you can start to bring in and use more complex um, motion tools in order to get some information out of, out of your blocks. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a force um, to my rotor, um, a torque, quite a small torque. Um, and what this is going to be doing is this is going to be showing a rotation around the, uh, around the rotor, which will make the shaft go up and down. Now, at the moment, it's just 2D geometry. What we really want, in case we want to get details out of this, is to be able to assign mass properties to it. Now, what I can do is I can actually assign mass properties to my blocks. So if I come back into the layout, select my block, 
there's an extra section which has appeared down the bottom mass properties because I'm in motion analysis and I can actually give this a weight. I can also choose where the center of mass is on this so if we have an off-center rotor we can actually apply the mass in approximately the right place. I mean it is a, it is a drag icon to position um, and then I'm going to put that back in the middle. I can also choose to give my shaft mass properties as well I'm going to put that at about 300. Now now I've assigned those mass properties I can calculate my um, motion study and we can see the gradual acceleration of my shaft there. Now in order to show you what we can actually get back out of uh, this and to show the change in the masses what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a result plot for this which is just going to show the speed of the speed of the rotor in the vertical direction. So I'm just going to choose this point here. And we can see there the slow and increased acceleration or speed as we accelerate our part. If I come back into the layout, and I'm going to double the weight of both my um, rotor and my shaft, just as a nice easy explanation. come back out of the layout we can see that the study or the motion study needs recalculating we'll let that go through and then what happens is we can show the plot again and we can see a much more gradual uh, increase in speed across those parts so once you've created your assembly you can actually get quite a lot of information out of it um, even though you're still in 2D geometry, I haven't actually had to create 3D, I haven't had to assign uh, materials, but I can still assign mass properties and get some, some physical data out of what it's going to look like when I actually make it 3D. So we can get uh, some nice results out while still only having a very simple image on screen. Now, we can also add some other very specific block relations. So previously I've just used coincidence and collinear, fairly common to, uh, to sketch items. But what we can do is we can actually come in and we can add some uh, sp specialist uh, relations just for blocks. Now, these are blocks that have been inserted into a sketch within a part. But what I can do is I can come in, I'm just going to edit the sketch, and I can select the three circles and, oh, wait a second. Don't want to be on the sketch, correction. Oh. Isn't it nice when the demo works smoothly? We can select our various blocks, and what we're going to do is we're going to add a belt between them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show off the new uh, functionality in the command search. This is me getting my knickers in a twist. and we can use the new belt chain functionality and it will automatically put a belt across all of my blocks. We can choose to reorder uh, them, so choose which way round each block the belt goes. Um, we can choose to reorder the, the, the order that the belt goes around them, so we can see by changing those two over we get a flip from one side to the other depending on what's relevant. We get a result about what length our belt is um, over this. Um, and if I hit accept to that, we can then turn one of our blocks and we see the motion through the other two. So we get a nice idea about what's going to happen across our um, section or series of belt driven uh, wheels through by the motion here. We can also decide to use traction as opposed to belts. So in this case, I've got my uh, three blocks again, very similar layout to before. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first, the first block and the second block, and then we can choose to add traction as a relation. Now these relations are specific to blocks. I'm also just going to add a horizontal here so things don't uh, fly around all over the place. And we're going to do the same again with the, with the third block. And once again, I can then rotate and we can see the motion between them. Now, we can start to combine these to get some much bigger models. Um, 
So what this was uh, my interpretation of the solar system, not ours, I hasten to add, because drawing eight planets would have taken me a lot, lot longer. Um, so we have a sun, a planet, a moon, secondary planet, further larger planet with two moons on it. We've got a whole series of belts driving from this one central rotor. And then what happens is we have a turn handle here. So I can turn it, use the traction onto the main belt rotor, and then we get our rotations, both of the planets around the sun and the moons around the planets. So as you can see, you can very quickly add a lot of complexity to your model to get a really nice uh, image out um, pretty, pretty easily, actually. I mean, this was time consuming mainly from getting everything so that it moved in a nice way to show you in the demo. The actual setting up of the model doesn't take too long. Um, so you can actually get some really nice results out of it. Um, what we find now is that you've got simple uh, geometry. So we've got a whole series of blocks here in this sketch. Each planet and, um, and moon are individual blocks and then we have belts driving those individual blocks. The rotor itself, as we can see here, is one block for all three levels, so I know they're always going to turn at a standard rate. Um, and that is a brief introduction to sketch block design. Um, I've had some questions. Um, the first question that we had come in from Sam was, um, is everything I've shown you here today um, within SOLIDWORKS standard? Uh, most of it Yes, the exception to that is where I was showing you the, no, I've gone to the wrong assembly, apologies, where I was showing you the motion study and adding in um, physical weights to things, that's only available in SOLIDWORKS Premium um, because it's part of the motion and SOLIDWORKS motion, motion analysis tools, um, but that is the exception uh, there today, so that's one uh, reason potentially to upgrade to SOLIDWORKS Premium. Uh, another question I've had is, is there, an, it, uh, is there a training course which covers this material as well? Because this has only been a pretty brief introduction to it. The answer is yes. Pretty much all of this material is in the uh, advanced assembly course. Are there any other questions? If there are any questions people think of um, at a later date, feel free to uh, email them over to me. You can get my email address um, off my name in the list, or you can send an email over to support at nova-systems.co.uk, and I'll be quite happy to uh, answer them at a later date. Thank you very much for coming. That's the end of the webinar.